All right, Gunnar, we're good. All right. Well, I would love to welcome everybody to the weekly Mozilla Community Call on February 26, 2013. Uh, let me turn your attention in the Etherpad today to your weekly updates starting at line 69 where you can multitask and otherwise parallel process with some excellent blog posts and videos. We've got a new standing item at line 94. What's the coolest thing you saw on the web this week, Rebecca and Jacob? Is that an audio item, Matt? I believe it is. Or is that excellent? Well, Rebecca, Jacob, and tell us more about this new standing cool web week item. Hey, this is Jacob. Hi there. Um, that's Rebecca. Hey, Jacob. Hey. Glad you could make it on there. Yeah. Um, so, because uh, we're diving into um, remixing and making things with WebMaker um, all the time, um, we want get some input on what's awesome about the web, um, what kind of things inspire you to want to make something on the web. And so we're just going to round robin um, on the week of calls. Is that right? That's right. Um, you know, we, we see a lot of things go by on the Twitter streams, and certain people are there at the right time to see it. But um, there's a lot of really amazing stuff that's coming along. And we know we don't want to do it via email. Here's your chance. Here's your place. So we're going to open every week with the best stuff that you had. We'd love it if you came with a link to offer the rest of the group. Cool. So folks can just go ahead and add their the coolest thing they saw on the web last week under line 111. Um, let's see. Pick up these. I'm sorry. Parent and Connie left. Is that safe for work? Uh, yes, it is. He says it's the open to the network. <laughs> Excellent. So thanks, everybody, for putting stuff in there. It is filling up like popcorn inside of a microwave. This is just fantastic. Rebecca and Jacob, any other asks before we move to the next item in today's what makes a community call? Uh, no, I believe Jacob might have something for us a little bit later, though. Sounds good. Well, thank you all so much for making this space. Very, very excited to see this as a new standing item. Speaking of new standing items, let me turn everyone's attention to what is currently line 130 in today's Etherpad. Brett, you have the WebMaker Weekly Release Update. Over to you. Star 7 on you. Hey, am I live? You are live. We can even hear you breathing. Excellent. Morning, Brett. Um, so if you look at one line 35, it was a busy week. Uh, that is a tag on our issue tracker for things that shipped within the last uh, seven days. So I want to make this just a, a weekly standing item where we sort of dig into some of the details uh, on what was um, pushed to production uh, as well as put on various staging servers uh, in the WebMaker universe. Um, we just had a ton of flurry of activity, so I just wanted to give a shout out to Jay Buck, who is on vacation, who helped uh, all of us push uh, some of the latest changes. Um, but the first item uh, that I wanted to talk about is uh, one line, line 138 stats, stats, and stats. Um, so for those of you who weren't able to see, um, JP and Ross gave a great presentation about some of the infrastructure that's been developed uh, for uh, across MoFo um, software. And this week we deployed hooks into those, uh, those statistics. Um, so uh, as of you know, five minutes ago on production, we are able to track uh, the number of projects that are published, uh, deleted, saved, created, remixed, uh, etc. So this is uh, pretty important for us to be able to see uh, what types of things people are enjoying making, which types of things uh, lead to being remixed, and, and this sorts of thing. Um, and over the coming weeks, um, you know, chime in on this, uh, JP and Ross, if you're around. Um, just interrupt me if you want to. Um, we'll start to see uh, these published in a, a dashboard. Um, we, we're using something called Gecko Board that will show uh, these statistics. So this is sort of a follow-up to some things you were talking about over the last couple of weeks. Um, some, something else that I'm sad to report on line 149 that 
Twitter has made some uh, rather lame changes to their API, and so we're going to have to start to deprecate uh, Twitter within Popcorn Maker. We're looking at different alternatives, but um, the long and short of it is that uh, Twitter will now require um, any software that uses their API to have users uh, log in to, to use that. And so we feel that that would be kind of a not the greatest user experience if any time anyone, anyone wanted to see Twitter in a popcorn maker made creation, they'd have to log in. So uh, we're looking at having to deprecate that. Boo is right. We're probably, we might have a link to a petition or something like that. Um, but we're, gonna, we're, we're still looking at some, some solutions, but it, it, it looks like that is the sad truth. Um, the happy news this week is that we, um, we have what we're calling a release candidate for the sequencer. Um, yay, exactly. Uh, we may have, so you'll have to forgive me. Uh, these things are done live and in the open. Um, Right now, uh, yeah, so some, some folks are sending on uh, line 51. We actually just staged this to our uh, dev server. Um, so the only trick here is that Jacob has made some really, really awesome content on what was, what was our sort of dev instance of this. Um, but we have a mission for you this week. It is to uh, head to the Remix machine and make your own Harlem Shake video. So over this week, we had a really nice feedback loop between Jacob building things uh, on top of Popcorn Maker and that uncovering some really critical bugs. And we know that he's not the only one that will find bugs. Uh, so we want you to do that as well. <laughs> Jacob has made some really funny ones. My favorite is the Harlem Shake on Speedboat on line 159, that is just my personal favorite. Um, but uh, you will find your own bugs. And you're right, I don't have the link to, to file that bug. I will add it. Um, I want to warn you that these remixes will, are going to be temporary. So that server is uh, just a temporary instance that as we improve our um, deploying our processes um, that will improve, but for right now we can't really guarantee the the, the lifetime of those projects. So that is a call to action. Um, the what I just wanted to give a quick mention that next the next feature that we're hoping to introduce is a YouTube uploader. So we'll have some content that we're asking folks to make there as well. Um, Anyone want to jump in on this that I, that I mixed? That I missed? Pardon me. Um, so this is a final note that we'll probably have an update to this um, in the WebMaker list. So just keep your eyes peeled there. We Brett, did you get sucked into your treadmill as part of your harmony video? <laughs> I'm scared he got remixed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Brett is ha ha, which means he's still alive, but his voice line has died even if his spirit carries on. Did anybody want to make any comments or ask any questions that we can put to Brett in the IM? He's saying next person emphatically and feeling super relieved that he's off the hook. But as uh, I think a lot of people have already opined, great stuff coming from uh, the work that Brett and the whole team are doing. So Brett, thank you so much. Let us move onward. Line 190 beckons. Doug, you are working on the web literacy standard, and I'm betting that you know what's next. Doug Belshaw, star 7 to unmute. Thanks, Gunnar. Can you hear me okay? We can hear you just fine. Just don't get on any treadmills. <laughs> awesome. There's no treadmills in my house, trust me. Um, so yes, as the information there from line uh, 190 downwards will tell you, if you're interested in doing things of a web literary, literacy style nature, then um, head over to the Mozilla Wiki page, which is there, the short link provided by Rebecca very kindly. Um, we're on the WebMaker list, as you might have noticed. Um, so we're going to have our own list. And Ryan Murphy very um, sensibly suggests that we should do everything on the WebMaker list. So you'll see that lots of people have said um, they would like to take part in defining a new open learning standard for web literacy. 
So that's what we're working on. Um, I've written several blog posts on this as to why we're doing it, how we're going to go about doing it, and everything like that. And they're collated on line 195. The kind of outward-facing uh, link to the community is on line 197. And uh, yeah, we've had two online gatherings um, so far. We don't like the word webinars. Um, uh, so Erin, Carla, and myself are all kind of working on this um, with some help from people like Chloe and Atul and Jess. And yeah, we've had lots of responses and lots of feedback um, from why do we need a web literacy standard to yeah, let's go, let's go and build it. So um, this Thursday, if you're interested in this, even if you're just interested in kind of um, lurking and seeing what's going on, then we're having a, a community call um, at 8 a.m. PST, 11 a.m. Eastern, or 4 p.m. GMT. Um, we're aiming for kind of a beta launch of a framework by the end of this quarter so that we can iterate on that, get people to align to a standard. Um, and by the time we get to MozFest, we'll have some kind of fairly objective learning standard for web literacy, which can evolve with the web. And um, everyone will be happy, and there'll be unicorns and rainbows. Any questions? Will the unicorns be makers, just to clarify? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. They'll also um, be remixable into different colors. Excellent. The kids are going to love that. I really appreciate your demographic savvy. Any other questions for Doug? What other calls do we have for mentors? Is there also a standing mentor community call? That may be a that question. That is a very for good question, which I'm going to punt over to um, either Chris or Laura or someone else on the mentoring team. Anybody on the mentoring team want to hit star seven and tell us about that? Well, I think they're off busy mentoring, so let's not tarry. Uh, uh, we'll I, sorry, I had uh, was uh, double muted. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you in all your glory. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, we're we're in the process of of designing that. We have a standing team meeting on Wednesdays at eleven, and we're probably planning on having um, some of the, publishing a schedule of when there'll be O community calls. So it's our current thinking, but we have nothing, um, and we'll we'll update that and put those details in the pad. But we haven't um, announced. Well, I guess I just did, but we haven't set that as a as a firm policy as of yet. So um, I guess that is the answer. Awesome, thank you, Chris. All right, let's take a look at other things that are popping up in the early 200s of this Etherpad. Um, okay, let me just. Respond Doug, are there to specific comment. areas? Yeah, so um, someone said quite rightly that it's quite hard to jump in um, because basically what we're doing is we're kind of pivoting the work which was previously um, underpinning the WebMaker work and kind of going off at a slight tangent to be more, um, well, bigger in scope, I suppose. So there's some of the work that I did um, building off the work that Michelle Levesque did at um, la forward slash weblit. Uh, but what we're using that is is kind of a, a straw man for people to to start to critique and see what they think they can work with. So who we're interested in? Well, we're interested in um, anybody who's interested in this work for a start, but especially um, educators, people who teach this kind of stuff, either in a formal or informal space. But we're all also very interested in organizations who provide learning activities, who feel like they need something to align to. So instead of coming up, um, and kind of pulling themselves up by their own bootstraps and trying to invent this stuff from scratch, um, getting everybody together, anybody who's got a stake in this, to 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 try and have some more of an objective standard. Um, so we're starting off on Thursday with, well, what do we mean by a learning standard? Um, and then we'll move on from there to try and talk about the work that's been done already and whether we feel like we can align with that or whether it needs um, any tweaking. And if it does, then you know where we're going to go from there. Excellent. Any other questions in terms of what you're seeing in that pad? Otherwise, this is very exciting news. I'd also right like to thank Michelle and Gunnar for the feedback they gave us last week because it was awesome. Thank you very much. Right on. Yeah, I really enjoyed that conversation. <clears throat> well, as if it was planned this way, we have a very natural segue into web literacy and webmaker badges with Carla at line 220. So Doug, thanks for all of your great work on the web literacy standard. Carla, tell me how we can get a badge to prove we know that stuff. <laughs> okay. 
So, um, well, Doug's been writing a bunch of posts on Web Literacy Standard. I've actually been writing posts on Web Literacy Standard and um, badges and how those two things can tie together. And um, you'll see on line, it's moving all around, but line 222, which is a great number, um, co-constructing a framework of Web Literacy and badges. One of the things we're really emphasizing here is that we are building this as a, as a larger organization, recognizing that we're going to be building a framework that other people are going to be hanging things off of and plugging into. Sorry, I'm mixing a bunch of metaphors there. Um, and then definitely related to that, so um, actually taking a step back, understanding that the web literacy badges are going to be representations of a few different things, but specifically foundational um, representations of the web literacy itself, that's standard. So what are the things that we can do in order to reflect that you understand or are aligning with or um, can work within that standard? And as Doug noted, we're, we've, I've, I've turned them the crackerjack team, right? There's a bunch of great people working on this idea right now. And the way that we're going to get there is actually through developing a series of activities um, and possibly widgets, and then assessments associated with those that will then be resulting in badges. Um, so the crackerjack team was, was previously mentioned. Uh, Jess and Atul and Chloe um, will be thinking through some of those things. Uh, I'm working through the idea of the kind of larger framework of how all the badges start to function as a system, and then also understand that um, other badges, not just <laughs> which is for the win, um, not just the Mozilla badges, but there will be other badges that might feed into this system as well. So recognizing we're building a full network and what that means um, and how we might be a node within that, but then there are other organizations that tie in with the work that we do as well. So definitely a partnership approach. Um, and that's where that what was line 229, building on the wider community. We're also, I'm also putting together a roadmap so everybody will have a good idea about where we're headed over the next the course of this year, but Doug helped to outline that right now with understanding that our goal is to have a full web literacy badges um, framework in place and functional by MozFest. So a lot of work to happen between now and then. Um, and then I just also want to put a, a um, pitch in for we're actually having a community hosted open badges call today, which is a rubric for badge systems design. So that's actually going to be running by the community members, but I'll be on it as well talking about badge system design. It's today at 10 Pacific. Um, one Eastern and four GMT, and then there's dial-in info. It's not our traditional dial-in info, um, so that's online 231 through 234, and there's also an Etherpad for that, and Emily will also be on that with us. Um, and then uh, you can also take a look at line 224, what our current Webmaker badges are, but we will be building out a lot more um, and moving to a higher level of badge thinking. That. So. I see that, um, I'm just going to wrap that up and see that I think there are a few questions in there. I uh, may be able to attend just a few minutes. Uh, great, so people are going to be submitting some badges for digital literacy in the Etherpad. Great. Um, and the ultimate big idea of each of the major web literacy standards will have their own corresponding badges. Um, so that's actually a very large question, and I wouldn't, um, the major web literacy standards will st still trying to figure out whether or not there's specifically one badge for that, or whether or not there are multiple badges that equate, equate to that. So um, right now, I don't know that we're going to come out with, uh, I, I see that Doug is saying yes, badges of all sizes, shapes, and levels. Um, but this is something, like I said, we're all, we're co-creating, so we're asking people to weigh in and help us think through what a badge system might look like, but understanding we're developing that framework, um, and then other people can start to add to it. Just in the same way that open badges have grown in an organic way, um, we're developing the web literacy badges in that same way. And where is the roadmap that Carla just mentioned? Um, Carla has it on Etherpad right now, and it is actually not public because it's still in process. Um, but I anticipate that it will be posted um, by the end of, oh, <laughs> so it is posted. Um, but there, there will be additions to it. So um, I'm actually modifying another one in an Etherpad, and I'll update it by the end of this week. I do have a super secret one. Um, and if you do have any idea of other badges you'd like to see created or at least thought out and commented on at some point, please drop them into the Etherpad on line 246. Awesome. Carla, thank you so much for all the great leadership on WebMaker badges. Um, and anybody else have questions before we move right along? We are cooking with gasoline on today's agenda.
All right. And just to draw your uh, attention again to line 245, how to get involved, you can go ahead and submit ideas. There's a link right there for badge ideas. So right on, and thank you to the person in beige text who is plus one in constellations on line 239. All right, let us move on. Oh my goodness, I didn't know this. Game on competition submissions are now closed. Who is telling us about what is about to get done? Line 250. I think that's Chloe. Chloe. Chloe, are you there? Might you be telling us about games? Is that a fair question? Star 7 to unmute. All right. So this, if someone were speaking right now, they'd be talking about the information on line 252. Game on is over after 2.5 months, three categories, and 10 game jams. We encourage Hi. you all. To is that <laughs> Chloe? It is me. I was talking to myself. I'm sorry. I'm you know what? Me. I'm sure you're in good company. So I just want to invite yeah. you to take, pick up where I left off, line 250 in the Etherpad. Okay. Well, uh, thanks, everyone. So. Uh, game on is now um, over, so it's game over for the competition. And I just wanted to share with you um, my official entry. So uh, we kicked off at the competition at MozFest, and uh, for the last two and a half months, we asked people to basically uh, do crazy things with the web. We introduced three a little bit um, kind of new categories aimed to push the way we think of the web as a gaming platform. So uh, we ask people to make hackable games, um, multi-device games, so games that might use uh, different devices in innovative ways, um, along with the browser, and web-only games, so games that can only be played on the web and, and use the web mechanics uh, to do so. Um, so uh, it has been kind of, um, it feels like longer than two and a half months, but uh, we managed to pull off about 10 game jams. Uh, one of them, which was Youth Focus, which we did with the Hive, um, and have about 200 prototypes and 165 official entries that you should all go play right now. Um, this is what you should take away from this call. Uh, and uh, it was, it's really great. If you, if you um, check out the prototypes and, and the games submitted, you'll find uh, you know, a paper spacecraft controller for a browser game. You'll find uh, a game where you have to inject JavaScript to your characters to make them avoid enemies, uh, or a game that you, you'll find uh, people in a square in Copenhagen shooting zombies with their phones. Uh, and all of them are browser-based. So also it was great to see participants from Morocco to Denmark to Canada um, and of all different kinds of ages. So we even had participants as young as uh, 13 and 14 years old. So if you're interested about the judging, um, we got inspired from the previous competition as well as competitions um, like Node.js and other uh, game competitions, and we are doing this in three phases. The first phase was pretty fast. It was Sunday night, um, where we just went through all the, all the entries and selected valid ones, so games that are playable, they have no plugins, and no inappropriate content. Um, and then phase two started yesterday. A uh, huge shout out to the internal resilience uh, who are helping decide the notable entries, entries who move to the next phase of judging, which starts on, on Thursday with um, our great panel of judges that you can check out on line 257. And then we will be announcing winners hopefully around March 8. Uh, and after that, it would be lovely also to share some lessons learned with all of you in case you want to run a game competition um, or other competitions. So that was, that was my update. Um, have fun playing with the games, and we'll, we'll make an update for sure when we have the winners announced. So questions. What are some of your favorite game submissions? Ah, I don't want to share it because it's, it's an open community call, and the judging is still going on. So I definitely have some favorite ones, but if you guys can all be patient until we announce the official winners, just to be fair. Um, oh, come on, cheat and just tell us one. No, I can't. I don't feel it's right. Kidding. Um, okay, okay. <laughs> ping me on IRC, and I'll share some, some uh, entries that I think are notable. You can also ping all the notable, um, the people that are on the nomination committee on line 256, throwing the ball. Uh, so when will the winners be announced? They're on March 8th. Can we present them of them in the March 11th of Mozilla All Hands? Yeah, absolutely. That would be fantastic. 
so we can coordinate a lot. To have them appear on camera, it depends on where they are. We have winners from all over the place, so we'll have to coordinate on the logistics of that. Yes? Any other questions? Everybody's playing. Okay. <laughs> Chloe, thank you so much, and thanks for being on demand to facilitate that agenda item. Very good stuff. People are excited. You can see it in the IRC. Hey, line 278, the open badges, where we're at, and a review of Q4 2012. Hey, open badge people, is that an Aaron item or who might be telling us about open badges? Hi, it's Sunny. Can you guys hear me? Yes, Sunny. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning to you. Sorry, I'm kind of getting over a cold. Um, so I, create, I posted um, a blog on, that you can find on line 281. Um, basically, the team is really heads down right now um, sprinting towards our Q1 deliverables um, that um, basically kind of we're aiming for the Digital Media Learning Conference to be kind of our launch of version 1.0. Um, so we're totally, totally sprinting, 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 but I thought it would be really nice to kind of take a look back and review um, Q4 and think about like the different kinds of things that we've already accomplished thus far. So I put that all together in the blog post that you can see. Um, so I just wanted to quickly kind of highlight some of the things that we've done this thus far. Um, uh, first of all, um, we planned out, we scoped and defined version 1.0 and what that's going to look like, which is what we're um, trying to get through this quarter um, which we'll, um, with a list of features that we'll be releasing in a couple of weeks. Um, in addition, we've done a lot of adoption planning. We've developed um, complementary tools to help people get onboarded with Open Badges, including Open Badger, which we utilize for WebMaker Badges. Um, we think that so Open Badger Beta was released in conjunction with the WebMaker Badges released during MozFest back in November. Um, we think that Open Badger could be utilized for um, um, other other folks that are interested in issuing badges as well. So we'll continue to work on that. Um, in addition, we've kind of identif we've identified strategic partnerships um, to really kind of tell our story. Um, and expanded, started scope uh, defining out what the support system, a distributed support system would really look like. I think the last time we checked our stats, we had um, close to 550 independent issuers that were issuing open badges into our system, with over 55,000 open badges issued thus far. So we want these folks, and, uh, and um, the majority of those folks were self-service. We, we, um, I think only a small percentage of those we actually had conversations with. And that's exactly the, that I think that means success for us. We've done a good job with documentation and onboarding, but we want to make it better. Um, in addition, in terms of community, we've hired Emily who has been awesome. We've really, really expanded our community. I think our Google group mailing list is in the thousands now. Um, we've also split it um, to, have, to the Open Badges Google group in addition, an Open Badges Dev group, um, and we have a thriving Twitter feed, Tumblr blog, um, Google Plus, everything. And Emily's just been awesome at managing all of that stuff. Um, in addition to that, we're focusing a little bit more on foundational frameworks and practices. Erin um, released um, an RFC for her badge validation paper, which you can read. Um, you can, she sets it up on her blog post which is linked on two, line 293. And then um, she links to the actual paper. And if you guys could take a look at it and provide any comments or feedback, that would be awesome. And Erin's um, um, been in DC um, engaging in policy reps to think about how badges, what kind of policy implications badges have and to further the conversation of badges being a real alternative credentialing model. <coughs> Um, and last but not least, um, of course, Carla has been leading the Mozilla Badge System effort. We released WebMaker Badges as part of Mozilla Festival back in November, and we're continuing to expand on that. So um, while we're kind of heads down sprinting towards V1.0, I thought it was important to kind of reflect back on what we've done thus far and kind of feel proud about it. So that's it. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Um, that was epic sharing given the state of your pipes. So thank you very much. Thank you. Any okay. questions that don't involve Sunny having to talk? Kidding. 
All right. Okay. Questions popping up. Sunny, do you want to speak to anything? Lines 303 to 308? Sure. Let's see. Do you have examples of the WordPress or Facebook display widgets in the wild? Um, yes. Um, we'll link to these. Um, the Facebook one is an alpha, and we're actually, um, as part of our 1.0 release, um, we're going to have it. It's part of our 1.0 release. It's going to be op um, the open graph integration of it. So I think it will look a lot better in a couple of weeks, and I think um, it might be worth waiting for the, that release to share the Facebook one. But in the meantime, we'll link to the WordPress um, um, plugins. And like Doug mentioned in line 305, um, he actually, uh, there's a link to it in his blog. Um, can you talk a bit about how the backpack will evolve? Um, so right now, um, the backpack, the backpack, the most of the evolution of the backpack will involve user experience improvements. Um, right now, we do understand. Oh, well, the existing backpack doesn't have any user experience or any UI at all, for that matter. So um, a lot of the improvements that we're making are um, UI improvements as well as UX improvements. Um, some, some visual communication will be definitely present that, that has been absent, absent for the past, for, during our beta. Um, but while we you know, make cosmetic changes like that, we're also thinking about um, what the next version of the backpack looks like, and we're scoping that out. The next version of the backpack that we're thinking about will really kind of um, Think right now the backpack is largely kind of a badge management tool, but we think that there's an opportunity to enhance discovery, provide um, add a layer of social to it, um, recommendations, etc. So those things are all being currently scoped out. Um, what are the most impressive badges issue badge issuers so far? That's really tough um, because that, that I, I'd say that's so subjective. It's really hard to see, but in terms of um, strategic partnerships, we are thinking about big impact. Obviously, you know, um, MOOCs have really captured the imagination of the country, so we're thinking about the Coursera's and the Udacity's um, as strategic partners um, um, in terms of um, big issuers that can help, gain, help us gain more traction and be a part of a big alternative credentialing conversation on a national level. Um, but I would say I've been impressed with a lot of the badges that have been issued thus far. Carla can actually talk to this a lot too. Um, we'd be happy to kind of we'd be happy to further have um, a deeper discussion um, offline. If you join our community calls, um, our community calls have been really really thriving. We're holding steady at about like 30 plus participants on a weekly basis. Um, the folks, the conversations that surface there are really really impressive. We're actually getting a lot of um, traction from higher ed folks these days too, um, who are really interested in thinking about. Um, alternative ways in which they can engage students, alternative ways in which they can capture competency, et cetera. So um, uh, I, I'm not sure if I – I'm not answering that question, but I think it's because it's pretty subjective and hard to answer. Um, last, last, do I have one more question or move – what do you think, Gunnar? I'll just answer one more question real quickly. Impressive in terms of telling a story, 55,000 badges is a lot, but hard to tell a story about impact without a little meat on who's issuing them. Um, yes, we're, we're trying to kind of capture that information, but um, because it's an open system, we're not gatekeepers. Anybody who aligns with their standards, the metadata specification or, and integrates with their API can play. So um, we're, kind of, we're trying to figure out a best way to kind of surface that information. Um, in addition, I think that um, in, in terms of telling a story, a real impact way of telling the story would be when people start actually getting jobs and um, expand, unlocking opportunities through badges. So that's something we're really, really focused on in 2013 as well. Excellent. Thank you so much for all of that on-demand information. Super appreciated and very exciting. Cool. All right. Friends, as I move down to line 338, who is handling that agenda item, Matthew of Thompson? Um, I guess it can be mostly nonverbal. Um, many of you probably saw the great uh, popcorn sequencing um, demo uh, video package that Ryan and Rebecca put together for yesterday's Mozilla All Hands meeting. Um, uh, <laughs> 
Indeed. I'll take, some, I'll take some of the credit, but most of the work was done by you guys and just actually pulling it together. But I guess I would just say, um, you know, we want to make this um, uh, a more kind of standard part of what we do is really telling our story well each week in that meeting. So we're just looking for your ideas on what the sort of logical next um, topic for the March 4th All Hands meeting should be. So you can just add them under line 340. Um, Maybe something on badges people are suggesting, which makes sense. Sounds like we've kind of made the decision that March 11th would probably be something about game on, and may, ideally, it'd be really cool to do some demos, Chloe, of um, the winning games, or maybe even we could bring some of our winners into a Mozilla space and have them appear on on camera. Um, does that does that seem like a good idea? Possible? I guess we don't. We will know more once we know who the actual winners are. Um, but any other suggestions for this coming Monday, March 4th? Cool. Folks can just add them to the pad. And we'll Love circle it. up on the webmaker list. Well, Matt, it looks like we have gotten to the nonverbal update section of this call. Before I call nonverbal updates, are there any other agenda items we should surface for the greater good? I'm going to take that silence as a vote of efficiency and draw everyone's attention to line 364 where nonverbal updates should continue to proliferate, the calendar at line 376 where you can see all upcoming events, and oh my goodness, it's there already on line 379, oops, line 383, the agenda for next week's call. Feel free to get your items on early because there's guaranteed to be a rush. Gunner, Brent, Brett, sing, wait. Brett is waving his hands in the air. It's like a dramatic scene from a silent movie. All right, Brett, come on back. Yes. Damn what it, was I was triple muted. Um, are you with me? Brett, we can hear you in all of your angsty glory. Okay, sorry. Um, so just in the, this call, Jacob um, recreated some of the the Harlem Shake videos that he had made on the JBuck server in our actual dev environment. So if there are any of you on this call who want to test out the latest version of the sequencer with some fun content, it's on line 350. Uh, and we really would like some folks to do that. It would be, it's, it's huge for us uh, to have real uh, use cases. So that would be our humble ask is that you uh, look at the stuff on line 350 and try to make some of it yourself. Right on. Thanks, We're Brett. It, it Brett. sounds like you're standing right by the train as it goes by, so wave for us. Excellent. Any other dramatic last-minute curtain calls on this week's Webmaker Community Call? <laughs> All right. Well, beautiful people, due to the miracle of information efficiency and multitasking, we have the privilege of declaring this Webmaker Community Call complete with 20 extra minutes of life bandwidth to grant back to every fine human that joined us today. I want to thank everybody who did inspiring things on this call and is doing inspiring things in the Mozilla universe. We will see you next week, same time, same place, on the Mozilla Webmaker Community Call. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Please stand by.